Hey, what are you guys doing in there? Huh. It's about the grill and what do you know? I find you guys. So today's video is gonna be on something that's almost worse than um, crack cocaine probably. And that's gonna be top waters. A couple tips and tricks if you're starting out or if you're new for top waters, then we're gonna go over um, what I used to tie them on and what I used to do before I tied this certain knot on. Now you probably can take a big guess and my favorite knot to tie that I use for everything and also for top water because I used to tie it straight on to here and I didn't know what the hell I was doing and I wasn't catching anything. So this weekend was a little rough on the fishing. However, we do got some footage on a first timer throwing top water and herself hooking up and that's Sam, the girlfriend. We got on some top water yesterday morning and also some bonus flounder edition footage and also something you shouldn't do when handling a flounder that we almost lost and she probably would have kicked my teeth in. But we're gonna get into some top water rigging tips and tricks right now. So stay tuned. Also for bonus footage after. Okay. So you see what that is? See the nervous water? There you go, sis. Now we're going back to answer the five questions about top waters, okay? So it's gonna be the who, what, when, where, why, and then we'll get into how. And I'll go outside to the boat ramp to show you guys a couple ways that I retrieve a top water and the ways you can start out to find your own groove and what you wanna do, okay? So let's get to the beginning. Who should be throwing top water? You, yes, you, the fisherman, okay? The top water is great. It's also that good searching bait. A lot of people like to throw paddle tails, a lot of people like to throw, you know, jerk style baits. However, for top water, early morning, especially for summertime right now, is going to be that great time to throw that top water. Okay, so you're in the middle of the day. Sorry. So you're getting ready the night before, you're rigging up, and you're like, man, what should I start out with? I just always have a top water on. The theatrics of it are amazing. And, you know, if that fish attacks it and misses it, there's a good chance that treble hook, I mean, it's not the best way to catch the fish, but it'll foul hook it in some shape or form, and you'll still be able to get that fish in. Or they'll inhale the whole dang thing, and you still get a catch. All right. What type of top water you should throw, you're asking yourself. I'm gonna show you. There's two of my favorite, and then one I'm trying to get figured out. It's a little different. Okay, here, two different companies, both make top waters. You can see they're different. Everybody knows, whoop, let's see if I can get that in there. The Hedden, Super Spook Junior. Has his name right here in case you don't believe it. And you can't read it because it's the other way around, but you can take my word for it, Super Spook Junior. And then we have the Sheep Pup, Mirror Lord. Okay? Now, you know how when you buy a new rod, the first thing you wanna do 
is the the. Let me see if I can show you. You get a rod and you do the, the little rod shake. Anytime you buy top water, you gotta do the. Just you gotta do it. So Super Spook Junior, first time I threw it, fell in love with it. I got some of my best bites on the Super Spook Junior. It's really easy to work. Tied the loop knot on there, and it walks the dog perfectly. The sheep pup and the mirror lure is more of a, man, that thing is loud, chaotic. That's when you want the party jumping, okay? You're really trying to get some attention over here, okay? Quiet, subtle, sticks to himself, trying to get some work done. Throwing shots back, going five deep. You know it's gonna be a party, okay? So it depends. So I like when it's flat, calm glass, Super Spook Junior is what I like. It's like quiet, real subtle, cutting through the water. There's high winds, a lot of noise, a lot of activity going on. You want to be the guy that stands out in the party. That's when I think you should go with something a little bit louder, a little bit more. So the Pup and the Spook Junior. In the winter time, or if you're looking for those biggins, this is what you're going to be doing. The One Knocker. The one knocker spook, big guy, real deep. And now you have the top dog. This was my favorite. I've caught a lot of big trout, caught a, lost a lot of big trout, caught and lost a lot of big trout with this guy right here. Just, man, he comes knocking through that water. Everybody's like, who the, just throwing that and the fish just immediately go, okay? This one, I haven't really worked this one too subtle. My partner has a good rhythm for this one. He does, his, I'll show you a couple times later, but I haven't really figured out the one knock of this one. I'm a big fan of this. Mirror Lord Top Dog, okay? So right here, little pink silver stands out. And the one knock. And last but not least, there's plugs all over the place, but these are the three that I've started with and I recommend. The Skitterwalk V, okay? Real quiet, That's quieter than the Super Spook Junior. Rattling around this whole thing. Really slick, this is mullet. The favorite part about these is the trebles on them. Really good trebles, okay? I haven't, I'm really bad about rinsing off my top waters when I get in, you need to if you're gonna be using them in salt water. And what happens is they start to, you know, corrode a little bit. However, these ones have held together amazing compared to God, this guy right here. Like just, this is bad. Shame on you, Antonio. Shame on you, AMA Fishing. Don't do this, don't be this guy. Wash and let your top water air dry. Let's throw that top water. It's gonna be the early mornings or usually if there's any kind of overcast, any kind of overcast going on. That's when I like to throw a top water. Sometimes I throw it all the time, but if it's too hot and the sun is out, I don't recommend throwing top water. It's just something I don't do. But if you do, you want to throw something flashy, kind of like that silver mullet, bring something to the table. You want to throw that top water in the morning, early, 6, 6.30, when that sun's barely coming overhead and you have just that glass is when you wanna start throwing that top water and walking the dog. Now, where you wanna throw it is like I said, you get to a new spot and you wanna see, is there any activity going on? Are they fish fired up? You know, what are they looking for? What are they keying in on? You can either throw, like I said, the paddle tail or you can start with the top water. Bomb it way out there and cut it through the middle. Bomb it and start pying off your sections, okay? Then you can move on if you want to, but if this is a spot that you like, then keep working it. Usually though, if you get that whole traverse, you're gonna get a bite if they're keen on that top water and they're fired up. If not, try and switching up your tactics and we're gonna go over that later on. But for me, that's when I would like to throw. What I do suggest is you do go pick up a top water. So you do pick up a Super Spook Junior. I suggest you pick up a loud noise maker. So either a top dog and then see what you like from there. The good thing and the reason why I wanna throw the skitter walk is because it's angled down a little bit better and those redfish, they have this mouth, so it's like this. Now, if a redfish comes up and grabs it, it's gonna hook them better, you know? So it's just angled down, so it has just a slight angle more than the Super Spook Junior. 
That way when it's dragging in the water a little lower, that redfish can get a hand on it. Especially right now with the CCA tournament, you do want to land that redfish. So the Super Spook Junior though, that's around with top waters, I do recommend getting a pair of hemostats because you're going to be landing a lot of dinks also. You'd be surprised. You're going to have the smallest trout go after the size of your top water that's that big. And you're going to be messing around and you're going to be seeing everything and their mother blowing up on the water and you're going to be wondering why you're not throwing. Okay. So right now, I'm gonna go to the boat ramp and show you guys a couple ways that you can throw if you're waiting or if you're on a boat and things of that nature, all right? All right, you guys, I said screw it. I'm just gonna show you guys real quick on how to rig this up, okay? So you got here, simple overhand knot. Oh, I already messed that up. So simple. Overhand knot. Okay, so when you get that overhand knot, tilt it and look at it. You need to make sure that this side is looking down. So as you're looking at it left side, see how that coin is tilted slightly. Okay, if it's tilted to the right, you don't want that. You want it tilted to the left. Okay, pull it down towards the little guy, little hole there. Hold it, get your top water. Slide that on through. Now, the tag end, which is this end that I'm holding here, is called the tag end. You're gonna take it, and you're gonna run it up to the face that is tilted down. So as we're looking at it here, that left side is we're gonna run that tag end through the hole. Okay. Pull it all the way till it meets the ring. Hold. Now, four times. One, two, three, four. Now you're gonna come to the top now of the hole. Let's see if I can get a better view. Okay, so you're gonna come straight on through, like so. Okay, cinch it down. Now you're gonna need to wet it. Either use some of your saliva or whatever. Cinch it. You're gonna pull it. And then you're gonna seat it now. Grab the lure and pull it to the seats down. Now you have that loop knot pulled all the way down. You'll know if you did it correctly because the tag end will be shoot. That tag end will be pulled down facing so you don't get any debris. And you can use your fingers there to help seat it. All right, I do. Clip your tag end. And now you got a top water ready to fish. So there's different ways you can side pitch it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, keep the rod low. Four, one, two, three, four. Do you just get a cadence going? Let the rod do all the work. It should be going back and forth, okay? Sometimes if you go, if you're throwing it too much, it's gonna be skipping across the water. You're going to see it's going to dive underneath. It's going to do all kinds of weird things. Okay, so just real subtle. Just real nice and calm. One, two, three, four, four. And just try that. Just walk it across until you get used to that. Now walk the dog. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you're waiting and you're too high, this is what you can do, okay? And you don't wanna keep that rod tip down. Toss it out, you can bounce it up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, up just like that. Two, three, four. And you should still have that walk the dog motion. So you have to be careful. If you check out the morning, there's a lot of debris on top. I wouldn't recommend throwing top water because you're going to spend more time taking out grass and whatnot instead of fishing. 
you're better off just switching to something else, either a subsurface or a paddle tail. What you can do. I don't know why I stopped recording. Redfish, I don't know, every time I've been straight retrieving it the whole time, I've been to hit. Trout, however, you have to mix it up. Sometimes one, two, three, four, stop. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Just play around with different cadences. And then this has been a big help for me too. If you ever, if you're working the top water and you get a pop and it happens all the time. You be walking, walking, all of a sudden pop and you're like, oh, and you freeze and you keep working it. Just stop for a second, pop it one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let that fish take time to come around and come back and hit it. One, two, and then they'll come back after it. And I've had a couple strikes land some really nice redfish and trout that have come back for it. All right, so you got your- One last tip. If you ever flounder, do not, do not, do not. Have the grips and grip the bottom of the jaw thinking that that's okay. I gripped the bottom of the jaw and what happened was holding him up, he flopped and it split his jaw in half. Thankfully, she still had the hook in there. So when he fell back in the water, he was still hooked and I had to grab him. Um, so if you know any other ways that you grab flounder, drop a comment below and let me know. That way I don't do another bonehead move like that and almost lose a doormat, okay? So remember, if you catch a flounder, immediately grab it through his gills, I guess, or just be really diligent on how you grab him through his jaws because if that bottom jaw rips, then you just lost yourself a flounder, all right guys? Um, anything else you want to see, like and subscribe. I'm going to try and get on the water this weekend. It might be a little different because uh, we got final testing coming up for the, the Fire Academy. And I'm going to be in my head in the books. So, But if I, I am going to get on the water at least once. So we're going to see. And hopefully we get some fish on. But stay tuned, guys. Another video coming for you. Yeah? Oh, babe. Oh, my God. Hey, hey wait, wait. Let some line up. Let some line up. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Yes! Woo! So Got a flounder! This is a big ass flounder! What? It's not big enough? Yes, big enough! No. no. <laughs> okay, hold on. That's awesome. Dude, they're fired up right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Dude. I hope so.